Hey, what's up you amazing hacker? So recently I've seen a question pop up a lot. Do you use your native operating system for hacking or do you use a virtual machine? Well guys, the answer might surprise you. I use neither. What I use are containers. Now what is Docker actually? Docker enables you to separate your applications from your infrastructure. It consists of a daemon that manages several components of the Docker ecosystem. These components are the network components, your containers, your images, and your data volumes for storage. Now we'll get a little bit into those later on. The daemon manages these components via REST API. We can use our Docker client to communicate with this daemon. Now the daemon is going to do all of the lift heavy lifting for us guys. So uh, some of you guys, some keen eyed viewers, you might have already noticed that this resembles the client server architecture. And you would be right, that's exactly what Docker is trying to implement here, which also means that Docker can run the client and the daemon on the same server, but it can also run the client on one server and a daemon on another server. So that's basically how the architecture looks like. Now let's get a little bit more into the components of Docker. Before we go any further, it's very important that we go over these terms. These are Docker specific terms and they'll help us understand the architecture better and how we can use Docker. So first of all, we have to talk about the daemon. The daemon takes input from the Docker client. When Docker uses a command like docker run, it can set, it gets sent from the client to the daemon, which carries them out. The daemon does this using the Docker API. A Docker daemon can also communicate with other daemons on the same server or on the network. Now that's basically what a daemon is. The client specifically is the primary way that Docker users can use to communicate with the daemon. The, uh, the Docker client can communicate with more than one daemon. That's also very important to know. So you can basically use one client to talk to multiple daemons. That's also very important. And then you have your Docker registry. Now Linux users and programmers, you'll undoubtedly have heard of repositories. For those of you who haven't, a repository is basically a collection of code or applications that we can use to download or upload our code or those applications to and from. Now I know that I'm grossly oversimplifying this, but at the risk of making a lot of people angry, I want to, I want to make people understand just enough to where they can follow and not overwhelm them with too much information. So that's why I oversimplified it that much. We can basically see the Docker registry as a big repository of images. Now we'll talk a little bit more about images. Docker is configured to look in the Docker hub by default, but you can run your own registries. That's also important to know if you want, it's possible to set up some private registries. When you use the Docker pull command or the Docker run command, the required images are then pulled from their respective registries. Docker push will push your image into your configured registry, which again can be a private one or can be the public Docker hub. Now, uh, some of the Docker objects that we have are images. An image is basically a read only template that describes what is required to build up a container. Containers we'll talk about later again. Often images build upon each other. That's also important to know. An example I can give you guys is we might create an image that builds on the Ubuntu image with additional customizations such as an Apache server installed or we can have our own application installed and we have some configurations for that image. You might want to create your own images or use the ones that are available and built by others. If we want to build our own image, all we have to do is basically create a Docker file that contains the steps required to build our image. Each instruction will create a new layer in our image, which allows us to speed up our development. Because if we make a change to our Docker file, and when we build our image, only the layers that have changed will, be, need, will need to be rebuilt. Now, we've talked a little bit about containers already. What is a container? Well, a container is basically a runnable instance of the image we just talked about. This simply means that we can stop, start or restart our containers based on our images using the Docker client, which will send our commands to the Docker daemon to be executed. 
Now, I know I'm repeating myself a lot here, guys, but these are some pretty new terms for some people, so it always helps to repeat them. We can connect our containers to one or more networks, storage solutions, or even create a new image based on its state. By default, containers are very well isolated, as the name suggests, from other containers and host systems. This means that by default you cannot access files on your host system from within the container and vice versa. You can, however, control that behavior and modify it by doing things like adding networks and adding storage systems that we talked about before. A container is defined by its image and any configuration properties you define for it. It's important to know that containers are not persistent. This means that if you make a change inside of your container and you restart it, that change will be gone. If you need a permanent change, you need to add it to your Docker file and run your Docker Compose commands again. Installing Docker is as simple as it can get. All you need is root or admin access to your host system. And then you need to go to https double point slash slash docs dot docker dot com slash get dash docker. I'll put the link in the description below. And you need to download the desktop client for whatever operating system you have, whether that be Mac, Windows, or Linux. Now, um, when you have that downloaded, all you need to do is install the desktop client. And after installing, all you need to do is start it up. Then you're all set to go. In the background, a Docker daemon will start and a client which, you can, which we can use to interact with the Docker daemon. Now, when we have Docker set up, we of course need an image and we need to start our container with that image. So we can go to Google, we can look up the tool we want to use together with Docker Hub, for example, Nikto space Docker space Hub, and then we will come to a page which will bring us to the Docker Hub for that application. Um, it will usually have a Docker pull command available for you guys, which means you can just copy it and paste it in your command prompt or in your terminal. You can execute the command to pull the image and then run the image using the docker run command. The docker run command is usually going to be described on the docker hub pages. Um, it's usually going to be something simple or if you have a very sophisticated docker image, it might contain several options like mounting file systems or adding networks for adding um, going to give you guys an example. If you play a lot of CTFs, you might want to build your own Docker file that contains all of the tools that you often use. And you might want to mount a file system and also might want to be able to use a VPN with that Docker file. So that's all possible, of course. Um, to run the Docker image, we can use that Docker run command. And if we want to mount a volume, we will need to use the dash V parameter, which will look something like dash V space, slash temp slash local path, anything local on your computer that you want to mount, and then a double point and again slash and then the path on your container. Now as for the networks, again, it's usually going to be described on the Docker Hub pages. If it's not, you guys will probably have to do some Googling, but it's really quick, it's really easy to use. So don't shy away from this, guys. If you want me to do another Docker video, if you enjoyed this video, we have a lot more we can do. We can actually look at the Docker Compose command still, and we can also look at a lot of Docker namespaces are still available that we can look at. And there are a lot of other Docker objects that we still haven't touched on. So if you guys want me to do another video on this, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for new suggestions for videos from you guys. I hope you enjoyed the background. If you did, I would really appreciate a like from every one of you. You guys are freaking amazing. We've crossed five and a half thousand subscribers. Thank you guys so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye amazing hacker. Woo.